up your praise right there. It looks like there's a church, like, like we have a courtroom set up in here. So I want you to be found in the God your best friend. We're holding on to faith. 
just, I said, can you sing it? Because that's where we are right now. When everybody is walking away from us, when it seems like we're by ourselves, that God is always by our side. That no matter what we're going through, he's always by our side. And that's just my song, because friends just walk away, they won't be there. They tell you they come and they don't come, but Jesus is always right there by your side. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Always. Thank you for that. Amen. I thank God for my wife, 
Amen, Lady Frank. Amen. Amen. Kinsley Grace. Amen. In the house. And I thank God for everybody. Yeah. Everybody, everybody. Amen. Um, I did, I do want to do something before we get started with the word, because I don't want to once we give a word to evangelists, I don't want to come back up, but I just want to do this because this is very important to me. Um, how many of you realize that we're in a season now of promotion? A season of elevation, a season of where God is taking this one to a higher place because they leveled up in their faith. Yeah. Amen. That's the season that we're in. I hope that you realize that um, there's some there's some promotion that God is going to do publicly, but there's also some promotion and elevation that God is going to do um, in the confines of just in your life where you can see, but maybe somebody else don't if they're not in the spirit. But however, I know that it is a, it's a season of elevation and promotion and God has been doing some things here at Embracing Christ within even though many might not see but he's been doing some things within our church he's been promoting some people to some positions putting them in place of where they can help the vision at this house go forth amen and God he is not done with that amen so um, at this time I want to present um, Sister Sheila Trustee Ford if you'll come up Come, I mean, come out, brother. <laughs> Amen. You don't got to clock out. You can stay on the clock. <laughs> Amen. Somebody get that later. <laughs> Amen. 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 Um, but what I want to what I want to do at this time? Wait, can y'all move over here, please? What I want to do at this time is that I want to present to you um, Deacon in Training, Brother ah. Happy Ford, yeah. and Deaconess. She was going Amen. We can do better than that. Amen. And we stand to our feet in a world of efforts. Amen. Because it is an honor for us to be a deacon and a deaconess in the church. Amen. Amen. And we know that these two individuals are very deserving. There's no question whatsoever. Many of y'all already call him deacon and stuff. So, I mean, yeah. this is just a confirmation of what God has already done. Yeah. But I want to present them to y'all. You can sit down now. Um, I want to present them to you because on um, in the next couple of months um, to a year, they'll be doing some training. Um, but they will be in place as, as an act of deacon. But there is a training, but um, they're in place. So that is deacon. Ford, as Deacon and Sheila. Okay. One thing I know about these individuals, they are not title driven. You know, um, I know they're not, but at the same time, I do want us to respect them where God has called them to. Okay. Yes. Because they are who God says that they are. And so yes. I am excited. I am very excited about them. About what lies ahead. And then they got they got a lot of learning that they're gonna grab under their belt so that they can help this vision go even farther. Amen. How many know that the pastor can't do it by himself? Yeah. It was never created for that to happen. So one of the things that I'm learning, even the more, and I do a whole lot, I do a better job than what I used to. Amen. It used to be hard to take my hands off of stuff because I felt like I needed to be there all the time. But God is God is getting me to a place where I'm backing up and I'm letting those that he's called to this vision um, do what it is that he has equipped them to do. Amen. 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 So as they stand up here, I'm going to ask the chairman of the deacon board just to um, salute. And he might have some words that he wants to say, that he wants to say at this time. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up for Deacon Fred. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. No, I just want to um, just want to congratulate you guys on um, we see him. The journey and we've been watching and just following you guys all the way and even with Deacon Ford he's been he's been helping me behind the scene a lot a lot more than you guys really you know can see I can you know we'll talk about something and I'll show up and it's already done all right. All right. and sometime me and him will talk about something and he show up and I already do it so the connection been there the whole time. And I just want, you know, just ask of the, the congregation and the members just to, um, you know, show him the same respect that you've shown me. 
And, you know, I know I never have any problem with anyone, so I just want to make sure to extend that out to him and extend that out to her. At the same time, the way, you know, if they say something or you need to go to them with something, you know, just know that it's going to be with, you know, just, you're going to hold it. And that's one of the key things is in this position, I hear a lot, you know, sometimes people come to me with different things and it never left that spot. That's where it, you know, that's where I deal with it. I don't let it get past it. A lot of times, he, he don't even, I might mention it to him, but that's the, you know, pretty much charging them with that as they're training. And, you know, I, I always got a little saying, but, you know, I'm gonna give you guys one today while I'm here. And, you know, there's one thing in life that we have to change. I hear people say, I've got something to fall back on. My thing is, I never fall back on something. We fall forward to it. So I'm falling forward to the help. So as you guys get in front of me, I'm falling for your help. I fall back, you know, it's back there. So I, when they leave the city, what he said, don't look. Yeah, right. All right, so if you look back, guess what's gonna happen? All right, so just let's fall forward to the help, guys. Yeah. One of the things you just realized is that deacons can preach too. <laughs> Amen, thank you Deacon Frey for that. That was awesome, that was awesome, that was good. Fall forward. Amen. I'm going to preach that when they fall backwards, man. What's back there? You don't know. That's right. You, you right. don't know what's back there. That was good. Amen. But again, we just wanted to um, just want to congratulate you and to say that we're excited. And thank you all for accepting um, the charge of this office. Amen. We're so, so grateful for you all. Aren't we grateful for them? Amen. Amen. You may be seen. Now at this time, at this time, I want I want to just shout somebody else out. Is that okay? Okay. Um, I want to thank God for Chantrell Best. Stand up, girl. <laughs> Amen. And, and this is why I'm, I'm shouting her out because she's, of course, she's a member here at Embracing Christ. But y'all, especially this month, she has come just about every weekend this month, driving backwards and forward from Fayetteville. Amen. You know that's gas money. That's time. She gets here to practice as soon as she can. She has a job where she has to work a little late, but she still tries to get here. So I just want to give her some flowers. Why she can smell them. How they smell? Thank you. Thank you. Good, good. Amen. But let's give her our applause, please. Amen. We thank God for everybody. But at this time, I'm ready to get out of the way because, y'all, we have a phenomenal word coming forth. Um, Evangelist, she has done an awesome job orchestrating um, this. I mean, she has some help, but we thank God for the um, the word that she has on today. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you it's good. Amen. Amen. And I'm gonna turn it into her hands at this time.
everyone. We are here to examine the faith of Pastor Michael Frank. Mr. Frank, in reviewing your case, I find that your story paralleled that to a man in the Bible named Job. So today, your faith is on trial. As I can see, and I've been questioning around town that you are a righteous man, that you've never done anything wrong, you are a hard worker, you also are a pastor at a church called Embracing Christ. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you also work at Brunswick County Schools. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you are the husband of one wife? Yes, ma'am. Uh, that was a little uh, long. I was just thinking about her beauty, but yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. And you are the father of two kids. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, I can see that there's been a lot of things going on in your life. I just found you're doing some investigation that you lost everything that you had. Your car, your home, your dog, your cat. But you still are able to trust God? Can you please explain that to me? How can you trust God when everything you have is gone? Well, it took some time to get to that place. It took some time. And what basically had to happen in my life is that I had to realize that uh, not having, you know, the various things like cars, vehicles, and, you know, whatever whatever else I had, I had to realize that, you know, God was my greatest possession and that if I had him, that I really had everything that I need. So I had I had to learn that, though, that it come over, over overnight. It took some some years, some months, some trials and tribulations. But I thank God I'm here. Hmm. Okay, so you're telling me that you don't have to have anything and all you have to have is God. Yes. Okay, all right. So, I also um, checked by the local hospital and I found that your, your health is failing. You didn't get a good report lately. So, you're telling me that you trust this God and, and you still love him. But it seems to me that he's forgotten about you. How do you feel? I too had that thought at first. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for divine encounters with him. And how he assured me that this time on, on the earth is going to be short. A man that's born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. So he reminded me of the word. And one of the things that has encouraged me in my faith is that in spite of any health issue or any sort of my body, I have a new body over Jordan. Right. And so that has that has encouraged me. And I know that I'm not just working for things down here, but I'm working to get a crown. Yeah. There's five crowns available, and I want one up. So yeah. right. I know that this is just temporary, but I got a home over yonder, beyond the sky. Right. Hmm. So you're telling me that even though you can't see this crown and, and this home, that you can't even see God, but you're telling me that you are still able to believe in God? Explain yeah. that to me. Yeah, well, you know, that's that's something good you said. But here, here's the thing about relationship with God. Even though you don't see him, per se, in the mm -hmm. physical, you know how you can be able to have, you have the ability to be able to see him in the spirit. Yeah. And it's not so much of seeing him in a natural form, but we just, I've seen him in ways of him just making ways out of no way in my life. Where he spoke to me in ways that I know wasn't coincidental because it happened too consistently. One thing about God, he's, he's consistent. So I know that it's him. And the feeling that he gives me on, deep down on the inside of my soul, um, nobody else, nothing else has ever given me that feeling before. So, yes, I don't see him visibly, but... I do see him in the spirit. I feel him. I connect with him. And also, nature is his sign, is a sign of his existence. Hold oh, on, Mr. Nala, did you get that? That he, he sees him or feels him in nature? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. All right, I just want to make sure we have that down. And so, just a couple more questions. Now, this is your wife, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you just told me that you got lost because she looks so beautiful and you love her. Yes. So that means anything she asks you to do, you do it. Yes. <laughs> Wait, if you need to take her. 
<laughs> straight that, straight that. So I, I just, I just saw that um, she had told you to curse God. Why didn't you? Because you love her so much. Isn't she your everything? Isn't she your helpmate? Sometimes, but not when it comes to matters of, of, of the spirit and of God. That's when she diminishes not to my everything, but just to a help. You know, not even to say she diminished, but that's a rightful place to be a help. But I read in the word that that it's Christ Jesus that completes us. So even though she's my rib, I have more parts of me. And the rib is just one piece. Everything is God. It's all God. Has he passed the test? That's all in the mercy of the court. 
I'm still a little kind of shaky, but we'll see what the, the jury has to say. Jury, can you address the court? Do you find him guilty or not guilty? Has his faith been able to stand trial? Okay. Yeah. Well, Pastor Michael, we look like the jury has decided that your faith has passed and you are a man of God. You are a man of your word. So bless you on today and I'm glad that God restored double back to you. You made me almost want to jump over and come to Embrace of Christ Fellowship Church. We have a seat for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bless you guys. I will be the stand. Can we just bless them? The Honorable Judge, Dr. Kyron Randolph, and our Shulamite woman, our stenographer. And can we thank Sister Sheila and Deacon Ford for how they set up this witness stand for us. I won't be before you long, but I, I really hope when I was talking to Pastor Michael, he said this would you know, be a good idea because that, that's what happens to us, that our faith becomes on trial, but it comes on trial when we're going through our trials and tribulations. It becomes public. We're on display, and the world, they're looking at us to see how we handle what we're going through. If you can see, Pastor, he didn't fidget he didn't stumble he he knew the word of god and he knew how to to come back with the word you remember when jesus was in the wilderness and when he came out he was tested and how did he fight the enemy with the word and that's the ticket right there if you do not read the word of god and study the word of god then you cannot fight did you get that you cannot fight that's I'm just going to talk a little bit and we're going to get through this. And God was also, he was dealing with me because we say that we have all this faith and we say that we, we're doing all these things. But when we come up, when trials come and the enemy throws a, a curveball, we act like that we don't know that it's coming. We, we act like that we have not read the word of God. He said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So that's why we get caught off guard because we have not read and studied the word of God. Because if you read the word, you would see in James where he, he tells us that we're going to have trials and tribulations. He tells us what? To count it all joy when they come. But we don't count it all joy when it comes. We, we whine. We complain. We want to know why, Lord? Why are you doing this? Lord, what did I do? What did I do wrong? Why are you doing this to me? Lord, I don't understand. But you saw Job was an uprighteous man. He never did anything wrong. He was the richest man. He loved God. And he still had to be tested. He also said that what? A man born of a woman is going to have some trouble, right? So that tells you right there that you're going to have trouble just by being born. But when you decide to give your life to Christ, you become wanted by the enemy. When you step out and say, I confess that, Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. When you throw your hands up, the enemy is on your track. The enemy, just like he went to God about Job, he, he wants to sift you as wheat. He want to prove to God that you are not who you say you are. He wants to prove to God that you don't have no faith inside of you, but you're full of hot air. That's his job. But the thing about it, did you see with Job that God gave enemy limitations? So that's the thing you got to know if you read the word and study that the enemy only could do but so much. He only could go but so far. He could do all these things to Job, but he couldn't kill him. He couldn't take his soul because God's hand was on him. But God had faith in Job that he was going to pass. And that's what God says. He said, go ahead and try my servants because I put so much in them that I know they're going to pass the test. We got to understand that this is just a test. When trials come in our life, it is just a test. And how we handle it determines the outcome. Did you hear that? How you handle it determines the outcome. The more you scream, the more you kick, the more you cry, the longer it's going to take. But if you can transform your mind to understand that God already has a way made, that he already has a way out, that there is an ending to everything, that I'm going to make it. If we can start perceiving in our mind that we already got the victory. Sometimes we got to take the lens and wipe our lens off to see what he said in the spirit realm and to see that we've already finished this race. Paul said what? Paul said he glorified in his affirmities because he knew what? When he was weak that God 
made strong and that the power and the glory of God will rest upon him in his affirming. Paul knew that when he was going through that I still got to fulfill my assignments because even though I'm sick, but the power of God will overtake me and I can still do what I'm called to do. See, our minds have been transformed so our eyes can begin to see and our mouth can begin to speak what we see. But until we clean the lenses and transform our mind, we get defeated. How many people do you think right now have walked away from Christ? I heard now Christians are going to psychics because they want to know what's going on. They, they can't stand it. That means they want not rooted and grounded in their faith. Why would you go to a psychic when this right here Bible is telling you everything that's about to happen? He said you're not going to know the season. He said one's going to be here and one's going to be gone. Ain't that what the words say? So why are we turning away from our faith? Because we are not rooted and grounded in the word. We are not reading. And the word here tells us we're going to be tried by fire. He said he's going to try us. He said he's going to purify us. How more to purify us than to take us through the fire? But he said you go through the fire and what? You won't get burned. And that's what he's trying to get us to stand on our faith. And even though that we have to cry, it's okay because when we cry, he said, well, he gave us a mustard seed of faith. So when we cry, when we're going through the valley, it's going to start watering that seed, and that seed's going to begin to grow, and then you're going to have to begin to have the gift of faith. See, you just can't get gifts unless something grows. You got seeds in there, and if you don't water those seeds and nurture those seeds with the word, then you can't develop. How you going to walk around with a half gift?
my business. Seemed like nobody wasn't coming. We had to pull from this place to this place. I can't get no loan. I can't get a credit card. Even one of my friends that used to could help me, I tied her money up. She said, what you doing? You tied my money. I can't even help you. Because I was like, yeah, I was like, God, what? God, you said? You said what? What are you doing? What did I do? And I'm crying in the floor. And God finally said, are you, are you finished crying? He said, if you stop crying and throw them tantrums, I can talk to you. He said, I'm trying to take you through some things. I'm trying to teach you how to survive with what you have. I'm trying to let you see that even though it looks like you on empty, but I'm about to bless you. But I can't bless you because you don't attend me. I can't bless you because you're not talking to me. You're trying to go to the credit card people. You're trying to go to the lender. You're trying to go to your friends. But if you come to me and turn your plate down, if you come to me and talk to me, I can show you what I'm about to do. Heaven. 
opened up. And he went on to say, Lord, just I commend myself to you. But forgive them for what they're doing to me. We got to know that whatever happens to us, that we got another place. We got to know that our relationship is right with God. We got to know this COVID don't leave. But we got another, we got another place in glory. The problem is we don't want to realize that we got to die. The problem is that we want to hold on to everything here on this earth. But God said you got to let this stuff go because you got another place. I got a place prepared for you. I got a place that's better than where we are. I got everything that you need. I just got to get your mind perceived that I'm coming and I'm coming. That we got to leave this stuff. And the more that you get it, that this stuff is not yours, that you okay if you don't have fancy cars, you'll be okay if you don't have big houses, you don't okay if you don't have millions of dollars, because you know when you leave this place, that everything that you need is already stored up for you. We gotta know that. We gotta know that there's nothing good thing that we done or didn't do that when we go through that it's just God's way of getting us prepared. We got to rejoice when we go through. We got to be thankful that he chose us to go through. What he say? Why not me? Why not you? Because that means you're a little bit closer to God. You're a little bit closer to heaven when you're going through some things. And you got to know that the more he takes from you, the more he going to give you. The more that he takes the more that he gonna give you. The more hurt you go through, the more love he gonna give you. The more you don't have anything, the more he gonna give you. The more he gonna fill you up with power. The more he gonna fill you up with peace. The more he gonna fill you up with joy. He gotta deplete you to give you all of him. We can't have half of him. We gotta have all of him. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to give us all of him. He wants to what? Fill us up till we overflow. Know that we know that we know that when we say it that heaven and earth is moving we got to know that we got the glory in our belly that when we speak that heaven and earth trembles you got to know who you are in the kingdom who you are in the natural and who you are in the spirit and when you put them all together you're going to make a powerful impact to the enemy why do you think the enemy tries so hard to take you out if he ain't messing with you, that means you're doing something wrong. But when you start getting dirt after dirt after dirt, you need to say, the enemy keep messing with me. The enemy keep coming after me. That means I must be a triple threat to the kingdom. You got to know who you are. And when you know who you are, and you fill yourself with this word, you're going to know that you're going to be all right. And when the enemy comes at you and you got the word, you're going to breathe it out like a roaring lion. It's just going to roll off in you. You got to be so much of the word that your conversation is about the word. That your friends don't get so tired of you and say, every time I see you, you talk about the word. Every time I see you, you talk about that Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Jesus because what? He stood right by my side. Always. scripture that I was going to use for the day. Come on, Jesus. I'm just give you my scripture. I'm going to move out the way, okay? My scripture was 1 Peter 6 through 7. And it says, So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you may endure many trials for a little while. A little while. So when you say trouble don't last always, you better know that trouble don't last always. Don't be singing these songs if you don't believe it. Now. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tested and purifies gold. Through your faith is far more precious than mere gold. Do you hear that? Your faith is more precious than gold. Your faith is more precious than gold. So do not think that your faith is going to be tried so that it can grow. So you can have the gift of faith. And when you walk about faith and not by sight, but you got the gift and you know that he'll move mountains with the gift of faith, you know you can speak to the wind and the wind don't stop. With the gift of faith, you know you can go to the, to the hospital and stand outside the building and command the sick to get up. Peter's shadow heal people when he walk by. So we ain't got to lay hands. We can just walk by the hospital and say, God, I command the sickness to fall off in the name of Jesus. Walk by the funeral home and I command that Lazarus shall get up in the name of Jesus. That's the kind of faith he want us to have. That's the kind of faith that you can walk 
It is being tested as fire, testing and purified gold through your faith. It's far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise, glory, and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So today, just know whatever you're going through, as Debbie say, it's just a test. And we're going to pass it. That you begin reading the word of God, that you can shake the very foundations of hell. That we don't have to be moved, that we won't be moved, that we won't be stuck, that we won't be backing down. Because we are kingdom shakers. And even though we wear a mask, that the glory of God is on top of us. And when we walk in the middle of the street, that somebody's going to be changed. What is it worth living this life if you don't help somebody else's soul get saved? What is it living this life if you can profess the name of Jesus? And what is it living this life if heaven ain't going to be your home? You know, I said this is just a rehearsal. No, this is a now, and it's either heaven or hell. And it's time to get it right. If you're going to profess Christ, you're going to be about Christ. And Jesus. Children, just a little while tighter. 
that heal and flow through the hearts of the people, Father God. Lord God, that we would turn from our ways, Lord, and just seek your face, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, we ask God, even during the election, Father God, you know who's supposed to sit, Lord Jesus. So, Lord God, we ask that you just have your way, God, in this season, Lord. Lord, we take our hands off of it, Father God, and we just give it to you, Father God. And Lord, right now, we just glorify your name, God. God, we praise your name, God, and we thank you, God, because we know that you already got it worked out, Jesus. We know, God, that you already are purifying us every day, Father. Now, Lord, now I ask God, let the gift of faith begin to develop in your people, God. Let the gift of faith begin to grow like never before, oh God. And then, Lord, just anoint their eyes, Lord, that they're not seeing in the natural, but they're seeing in the spirit. And their ears are hearing only your voice in this season. Lord, shut every voice that's not yours and let your voice be proclaimed in this season, God. Raise up your true prophets to speak your word to the nations, God. Shut the mouth of the soothsayer and the psychist, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, Lord, and Lord, let your word prevail through this earth. And Father God, we thank you on today. We thank you for our pastor, our first lady. We thank you for everybody in this place, everybody that's attached to this church. Father, I just pray that we shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And long life and longevity shall be our portion that we are able to do the things that you have called us to do in this earth. And Father God, now I tell you, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.